Hi, everybody. It's Susan with ArtSpark Texas, welcoming you to Community Conversations. And um, thanks, everybody, for dialing in, calling in, and uh, logging in. And we're here with Maria Palacios, our July Artist of the Month, who has got us on wheels, which I saw was your Instagram handle, too. <laughs> Um, anyway, Maria is going to talk with us a little bit about her art and her life, and um, we're going to attempt to look at some images that she sent me, and if I can get them up when she tells me to show them to everybody. And um, I also wanted to introduce uh, Eric Clow, who's going to actually formally <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, later in the hour we're going to do a writing prompt that awesome so as uh susan mentioned we're um very uh excited to introduce uh maria palacios the goddess on wheels um houston-based artist disability activist um writer poet feminist um and uh songwriter as well uh and, and more recently um so and she's uh written several collections of uh poetry and um poetic storytelling and a um dictionary of uh crypt terms as well which was really awesome and um uh has been a uh featured guest multiple times at our line and part of open mic so we're uh, really excited to kind of get a sense for um, your process and, and for you to share some of your art, which the, tonight we're going to see some visual art, as Susan mentioned, which is a new thing. So uh, multi-talented is Maria, so I'll pass it over to her to, um, I don't know, take us into your world. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I'm super excited to be here. <clears throat> and like Eric said, Eric said I've been a guest multiple times and um, in the disability community uh, here in Houston and throughout, you know, the nation, my work on ableism has been known and um, I do, I'm mostly known as a writer and as a performer, but I think that when you're a creative person, different genres of art present themselves to you and you're able to just embrace them. So. Um, I would have never in a million years uh, called myself a visual artist or a cartoonist. I mean, I, I was the kind of person who used to think I could not even draw stick people, <laughs> you know? But I'm a huge fan of um, the work of John Callahan, who is a cartoonist who was disabled and uh, was amazing. Um, and his work was always very inspiring uh, to me over the years as a disabled person, but I never really, put two and two together that I should like even attempt to draw or anything. And then three years ago, <clears throat> here in Houston, I was attending an art class for people with disabilities. And just for fun, a friend of mine just dragged me there. And um, I was really inspired by the fact that you don't have to be an experienced artist to, to try to express yourself through drawing. And so my, uh, I just, Starting around the same time is when I first watched uh, John Callahan's movie, He Won't Get Far on Foot. And, uh, and watching that movie further inspired me to at least try to like express, because I'm so obsessed with ableism. That's one thing that through my art and my activism right now is a big, huge focus. It's educating people, disabled and non-disabled, about the negative effects of ableism and also because many people with and without disabilities don't really know what ableism is yet you know so i'm attacking it through every form of art that i can possibly manage to get my, my hands on so back to the drawing which i'm really excited there are two aspects of my art artistic um projects right now that i'm super excited about so i'm, I'm kind of like what just going to mainly talk about those and during my time tonight um but I will also, you know, just for the sake of, I'll share a poem just because that's what I'm known for. <laughs> but back to the drawing. So 
rehearse it, the re rewind, I mean, uh, three years ago. And um, my early drawings started like literally like stick people, you know, and I here I'm convinced that that's all I can do. I really can only draw stick people. Uh, but what inspired me the most watching the movie was that I realized, you know, again, that John was a quad. You know, uh, he had to like hold the pencil like in a weird way in order to, to even make a, like a scratch, you know? So his cartoons look like, like really, and I don't even know how to label them, but they, they look like they were drawn by a quad. You know, they look honest and raw and, and real, you know? And um, what made me like really hooked to, to, to doing this was that his messages were so powerful. There's one cartoon that grabbed me, that cracked me up so much. And at the same time, it's the one that pushed me to like, like just say it like it is. And it was this cartoon by John Callahan in which there is this person, obviously blind, holding a sign um, that says, please help, I'm blind and I'm black and I'm not musical. <laughs> or something like that, you know? And I'm like, wow, you know, he's touching on racism, he's touching on ableism. And I don't even know if, if he if even realized that a lot of times when you become creative and you take your art into a different direction, you just do it because out of artistic necessity, you do it because you just want to pour it out of yourself. You know, you don't even realize how impactful, how powerful what you're doing really is. Um, I dare say that my art has always been influenced by disabled people in some way or another. Um, so I, I think that it's important that for us to support each other, to support disabled artists, to, to learn about one another and learn from one another. And it is beautiful to have those cross disability friendships because those are the, the, the friendships and the relationships that allow us to, to speak on behalf of other people like us. And that's what I try to do through my cartoons now. My little cartoons have evolved from little stick people to some of them are actually kind of good, <laughs> you know? And I, I drew like crazy. I tend to be, as an artist, I tend to be really obsessive. I, all of a sudden I wake up one morning and I'm like, ah, I'm gonna write a book, you know? And boom, I sit down and I just pour it out of me. And, go, and I like for an entire week or two weeks, I get up at four in the morning and I write until I, keep, I get it all out of me. You know, so the same thing was with the cartoons. It was kind of like a, like this wave of like, I. I drew for like probably three months straight, like every single day I would stay up and I have like maybe 150, uh, a, a really good collection, which now I'm thinking about turning into, into like an educational tool, uh, perhaps like a coffee table book or some of them are really cool and can be like made into cards even, you know, so that's a little bit about my cartoons. I do want to share a couple on the screen just to tell you about it, but I don't want to like spend too, too, too much time because I'm going to try to keep time, track of the time, 14, okay. Gosh, really? I've already talked this much? That sucks. We started late. Did we? Okay. Yeah. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I did it right. So, so yeah, this one is called, I just called Crip Psych 101, the Pyramid of Crip Actualization. And if you, as you can see, you know, those of us who are familiar with psychology, there is a pyramid of self-actualization. Uh, and so all I did is I was just like, I took it and applied the same concept to, to disability pride, to disability issues. Um, so my goal with my cartoons uh, tends to be wanting to educate people and also to like try just, some of them are just flat out outrageous and ridiculous. Same thing as Scriptionary, which uh, Eric mentioned is a little book of of every single word in the book begins with crip, you know? Um, and just to give you just a ridiculous uh, term from there, like a crip float is disabled person taking a bath. You know, that's like, that kind of like this ridiculous crip humor, you know? I just, I just love being able to take disability and turn it into something that the normies do not expect. Um, and this one instead, for example, it illustrates ableism. It illustrates, it says how, how normies justify ableism. And then it shows, you know, how sometimes it feels a disabled person to be caged in the system, to be held back in the name of what's good for us. Um, and non-disabled people tend to like not really think about it. The social workers, the medical model, the doctors, the family members, society in general, they cage us in, you know, in some, so many ways and in, in, in so many manners. 
Uh, so until we begin speaking up about our rights um, from every position of power possible, um, you know, we need to continue illustrating this. So that's what I try to do through that one. Okay, next. I love this one just because there are no fairy tales that involve disability uh, from a position of power, you know. Um, historically, disability has always been presented to society through the media in a very negative, conforming manner in which disabled people are either victims or villains, you know. So with this one, I'm kind of like mocking the fairy tale of Cinderella and I'm calling it Crippendella, in which the Prince Charming is bringing not a glass slipper, but, you know, a golden prosthetic leg. And I, I kind of like, like that a lot, you know, <laughs> just, just mocking the, the original with the, with the possibility of, it also sends a message that disabled women can also be found attractive, you know, that, that, that disabled girls have the right to dream and then to have our own version of fairy tales. Uh, next, if we have a next, I don't even know. I like this one just because I think it's ridiculous <laughs> and hilarious. Um, it is just the, the, the police officer telling, telling the disabled person in a wheelchair, you have the right to remain seated. And I call it the Crip Miranda rights. Uh, obviously, I have like a little bit of a sick sense of humor in a way, and I, I kind of like it. I, I think that this one would be a really cool uh, greeting card to have in the disability community, you know? Um, People are always, if I had a dollar for every single time that a non-disabled person tells me when I'm rolling somewhere a little bit fast, I'm gonna give you a ticket, <laughs> I'd probably, probably be rich. So I'm kind of like taking moments in my everyday life as, as an artist, as a person, and, and kind of making fun of it. All right, I wanna stop with the images here because I don't wanna take too much of my time. I tend to like get carried away with so much to say, but I do want to um, share a couple of things. I don't believe I sent this little cartoon and it's just called Crip Serenity Prayer. And it's just an image of, uh, of a little wheelchair girl, girl in a wheelchair. And then it says the Serenity Prayer, which I'm gonna read to you. And it says, Dear body, I grant you the serenity to accept the things you cannot do, the power to do the things you can, and the freedom to redefine ability. You know, so, um, Religious ableism is one of the biggest oppressors of disabled people. And no matter how spiritual or religious you may be as a disabled person, there's always that, that one moment when people want to lay hands on you or want to pray for your differences or, or pray for the wrong reasons. And I love the serenity prayer because it always says, you know, hey, help me recognize my strengths. Help me move beyond my weaknesses in so many words, you know. So uh, as a disabled person, it is about forgiving our bodies and allowing ourselves to do what we're able to do, you know, um, just pushing ableism out of the way and accepting who we are as we are. So I love that little serenity prayer. Um, next, I want to, because I, because I, I, I did threaten you with various genres of art. So the next project that I've been super, 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 super excited about is called the Music and Art Advocacy Project. Although I'm not a singer, and, and Eric, thank you for recognizing me with the honor of calling me a songwriter. I don't, I don't consider myself one, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because the, the kind of songwriting that I do is I'm, I'm simply doing Weird Al over regular songs with a disability theme. And to me, being a songwriter would mean that I'm coming up with the music, and, and you know, so I, it, it, it takes your songwriter. You know, so thank you for putting me at, at, at your level. Um, I'm, I'm just a writer. But... Um, I have been through this music and art advocacy project. I've, I've been taking songs that 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 are known over over the years, and there's a music that I like, you know, because I, you know, when you get old, you kind of like get stuck on the music that you like. <laughs> um, so I have um, into what I I do. What I do is I call, it's I call artistic advocacy, artistic activism. I use every form of of art and everything that I do through my art. With, with the effort to really create some kind of positive change, to send some kind of message of advocacy, to remind disabled people that, that we have the responsibility to do something with our talents. So um, <clears throat> this one, and God, you know, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be froggy with my voice. I can already feel it, man. But thank God I'm not a singer because otherwise you'll be like, uh. <laughs> I always like to remind people I'm not a singer, I'm a writer. But, you know, for the sake of presenting the material to you, you're going to hear me sing this little 
Let me open it up. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is Billy Joel's For the Longest Time, okay? But it has been replaced with lyrics of advocacy uh, for people with disabilities because I think that it is so important for us to continue remembering the message, the message for your inner activist, your inner advocate, that voice that tells you to speak up, to be alive, to be aware at all times. We have to. We have to. You know, so this is a little message of like a little anthem of advocacy. I've turned Billy Joel's <clears throat> song into that. And the way that I imagine and envision this song, like if I were ever to produce it professionally, would be so cool to have like a like a stadium full of posters. Because you see the original, the original video for the song has to, you know, it, it has all those posters of the people from before, you know. The, all those athletes and stuff, right? So I envision having the Ed Roberts, the Justin Dart, you know, uh, all the all the Crips from the past, all the, the the forefathers of our disability rights movement, you know, the ones from that that, that laid down the foundation for all the privileges that we enjoy now as disabled people. I imagine all that in, in a gymnasium, and and then somebody singing this, you know, just just coming in to the history. So here we go. Please forgive my voice. I'm not a singer. Whoa, for the longest time, whoa, for the longest time. If you were to say hello tonight, there will be more stories left to write. That's just what we do. We're so empowered to do more that it has happened for the longest time. Once you learn the power of your voice, you will learn how advocacy works. It's how we find hope, we find it in each other now, and we have been there for the longest time. Whoa, for the longest time. Whoa. For the longest, where the voices of the ones now gone coming back to advocate once more. That's why we need you and why we pass this torch to you. And this will happen for the longest time. Maybe this will last after all as we connect the dots of our history once more maybe we've been pushing so hard and we have gone this far but there's more work to do for we just know there's farther yet to go and more stories connecting to our own we have become one our advocacy will live on and it's been going for the longest time i know we may have doubts at the start we say to ourselves hold on to your scars then we learn how powerful we are stronger than we thought and more than we had hoped for. I don't care how hard this quest may be. We have fought for less important things. And we must all know, disabled people will fight for more. It has happened for the longest time. Whoa, whoa for the longest time. Whoa, whoa for the longest time. Whoa, whoa, and you know what? For the longest time, we will continue to fight. Advocacy, the kind of advocacy that disabled people are capable of, move mountains. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, having been there, rolling with a group of thousand people, passing the ADA, abandoning my own wheelchair, along with other disabled people at the foot of the Capitol uh, steps, and crawling all those 70 some steps with my bony butt, my bony polio butt, you know, that's the kind of activism for the longest time. And that's the kind of responsibility and love for one another as disabled people that we have to hold on to. It is about sharing our power, sharing what we have through our art. So I don't want to like keep preaching because I get really preachy. I know that um, I want to facilitate or help facilitate some kind of uh, writer um activity 
Okay, and um, I always, whenever I, I, I'm invited to talk, I, I just can't help it. I focus on the power of self-love because everything begins and ends with self-love. The whole entire world has issues with, with body issues, has problems with, with self-acceptance, whether you're disabled or not. But when you're disabled, ableism makes sure that we continue stuck in that negativity and that self-pity and that self-loathing. So I'm always encouraging people to do everything that you can to see yourself from a position of power. So I prepared this little exercise. Um, do we have that on the screen somewhere so we can everybody can see it by any chance? But if not, that's okay. I can Let pull that up. Look here. I think I think he sent it to both of us. Uh oh. That's okay. I sent it to you, so I'll just pull it up and I'll tell you about it. So pull up your writing stuff. How much time do we have? Because I really would have loved to do do writing activities, but oh, we might have time. Okay, let's begin with, with, with the first one. Hang on. Writing activity. Okay, don't worry about it if you don't have it. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay, no, no worries. I, I can tell you what to do. So this is short but sweet. And it's a fill in the blank. I love fill in the blanks because it, it, it really opens up the channel to your innermost unexpected awareness of self, you know, if, especially if you just like really let yourself flow. So this says at the very top, it says, I am a breathing verb. And through this little exercise, I want you to conjugate yourself from a position of power. So the first, the first fill in the blank says, I was. So you can go ahead and write, I was. And then the second line is, now I am. And then the third line is knowing that I will be. Okay. Now, the instruction says conjugate yourself in every tense, doing from so from a position of empowerment rather than regret. Complete the I was part with a word that describes something you no longer would want to be. Do not use the past tense on something you feel sad about, such as I was happy or I was rich, you know, uh, because that would defeat the purpose. Mm -hmm. um, the purpose of conju conjugating yourself from a position of empowerment is to help you remember how strong you really are. Whatever you overcame in your youth has made you the stronger person you are now. And the way you envision yourself in the future will help destiny make sure that it comes true. You know, it's, it's just a little exercise to envision that, you know, to let go of the past, stay in the present, envision the future from a position of power. Okay, so. Susan, could you type that in the in the chat? Just the, it's it's a, uh, I was, I am, knowing I will be, right? And then you know I had said at the, at the top it says I'm a breathing verb. I want you to end your part with that. Instead, bring that at the very bottom. After you say, knowing that I will be, you're going to put, I am a breathing verb. So everybody's going to end their little statement, their little creation with, I am a breathing verb. So, yeah, I mean, we we might have time for, for two of these, uh, Maria. Okay, like, cool. I want to do like five minutes on this. Mm -hmm. Let's see where the 10 minutes take us. Let's let's just go ahead and take 10 minutes just because I don't want people to feel rushed. Okay. You know, um, and then if we all finish in five minutes or less than 10 minutes, then we can just go dive in in the other one because the other one requires a little bit more uh, writing time. Okay. Did I get that right? I was, I am. Knowing that I will be. Knowing, well, knowing I will be. Okay, knowing that mm -hmm. I will. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also, by the way, have other material in case we still have extra time. I just didn't want to like overdo it with my preaching conversation, you know, and let you guys dive into other stuff. So we'll see, just take your time, enjoy the process.
how are we doing? Nicole and I are ready. Did you mean when you said I am a breathing verb? Are we supposed to add a verb where you say verb or? No, that, that's just how I want you all to end your. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. End or start, whatever. I just, that was just part of the idea of conjugating yourself into empowerment. Okay. Do you all feel okay sharing? Can I hear what you all wrote? Sure. Sure, you're a. Uh, uh, read mine. No, 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 you step in the video and you, Nicole would like to share. I want to be invisible. <laughs> okay, she wants to be invisible. All right, well, I'll do a sideways. Hi. Okay. Um, mine was um, I was a dogfish, now I'm a humpback, knowing I will be algae. I am a breathing verb. I like it. <laughs> I, I've got a, a short one. Um, I was silent. I am learning the shape of my voice, knowing I will be heard. I am a breathing verb. I love it. Man. Anybody else? I want to hear everybody's. Okay, there's three art, art stuffs, art sparks, starfish people. Two, two gone. Who's going to go next instead of me? <laughs> I hear Kristen. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll give it a try. I was timid and shy. Now I'm bold, beautiful, and blunt. I will be a mentor for women and girls with disabilities. I am a, and I said sparkler. Thanks. Love it. True that. Okay, I like little short things. So, um, I was unemployable. Now I am employ employed at jobs I love, knowing I will be loving my work. I am a breathing verb. I was alone and unworthy and alone. Now I am connected, knowing that I will be both the sun and the moon until I become something else. Um, I, I was hopeless, now I am hopeful, knowing that I will be resilient enough to dance through both. I was an anger bomb waiting to explode, now I am, a mind, I am mindful of where I shoot knowing I will have more wisdom and ability to change hearts with connections and less need for annihilation. I am a breathing verb. Awesome. Hello, you have great first lines, boy. They, they hook me. <laughs> I love it. I, I love everybody's energy. Did everybody share or we're missing somebody? Uh, I didn't share. We're missing some. I can go. I have, I have two. So um, the first one is I was small. Now I am big, knowing that I will be perfectly sized. I am a breathing verb. Um, and then mm. my next one is I was self hating. Now I am self accepting, and I know I have infinite potential knowing that I will be self-loving and powerful. I am breathing bird. I love it. Awesome. Who's next? I can go. I knew it. I knew it. I was like, just waiting for you. Go. 
<laughs> so I wrote, I was ignorant. Now I am learning, knowing that I will be making growth. I am a breathing warrior. Ooh, I, just, I just did one. I wrote a bunch of other stuff too, but I'm not gonna. Do you want to share? Do you want? To? I don't think I want to share the other one. Okay, it's that's fine. Yeah, thanks. That is so cool. I did. It, has everybody shared? So I haven't, but yeah. I don't know if I followed the. I just jabbered on. I don't know. And then I drew a picture. Well, I, of you. <laughs> I drew a picture of Maria. It's not good enough to show. And then I drew a picture of Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> Your muse is just wandering free. Related to what I was writing, so I'll, I'll pull pieces of it. But I don't know that I followed the thing. I That's was okay. wishing I had time to make more art, to draw and paint and write more. It seemed there was no time for pursuing these things. Lately, though, I am seeing that if my if I set my intentions and schedule it, there is time. Knowing that I will be making the time to create actually helps me be more creative and ready to make my art when the time comes. But I didn't do I am a breathing verb, so that's OK. I said <laughs> and okay. I drink. But you are a breathing verb, OK? OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was just a, a a little simple one to three energy creator activity, you know, because when we fill in the blanks and we gather in a group, chances are that the energy that we are sharing is gonna like simply come together. <clears throat> Where are we on time? Okay, 47. Wow, time just fly, huh? We are not going to have to, to do the time to do the other activity simply because that activity requires longer writing. But if you want to, no, I don't want to leave people hanging. It, it is a good activity, but it, it, it's just a longer uh, rain check on that. Rain check. Do invite me again to do a, a writer's workshop and I'll have your butts writing for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like with 10 minutes, I don't think that we can get into 10 minutes because it would require 10 minutes just for you guys to write down what you need to write down. So uh, if you don't mind, I, 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 I can go back and share before we're closing uh, something just, well, this is something uh, I, huh? I, I was gonna suggest if, if anyone has any questions, can people ask, you know, if anyone has any questions for you real quick, just so we have time for that? Uh, sure, yeah, um, I will leave, what time is it? Yeah, this will be super fast. It's not going to be long. I just want to share this with you guys and then I'll leave you guys for questions. This is a little card that I call Crips Ten Commandments. And I just kind of like base, base them on the Ten Commandments, but, you know, apply them to disability justice. And uh, the first one is love your body. It is the only body you will ever have and a gift from the creator. Do not let life pass in vain. Embrace and celebrate the lessons. Respect your body's need to rest. You know, we live in such a fast society that we don't respect our body's need to rest. We, we're constantly pushing ourselves, always. Honor your parents and loved ones by not letting them have a family pass on ableist actions or comments. Do not kill hope in the crypts who think they'll walk again or see again or be non-disabled again. They have the right to their own journey of acceptance and self-love. Nothing between consenting adults is ever sinful, dirty, or forbidden unless you make it so. Do not allow anybody to steal your personal freedom and decision-making power over your disabled life. Don't let the lies you've been told about your body control your ability to live fully. You have the right to express your desires. Do so knowing you already have everything you need to give and receive love. And last but not least, do not allow ableist expectations to keep you from becoming the best possible version of yourself. So those are the Krypton commandments which I created. And um, I hope that they provide you with empowerment of your own. And um, uh, with the last seven minutes, whatever we have, you, I would like to, again, thank you for having me. And if you have any questions, I'm all yours. Thanks so much, Maria.
Um, yeah, that was that was a great writing prompt. I liked how you could kind of do a short version of it, or you could kind of you know go at it for a while. And um, yeah, sometimes it's just hard to get started with writing or whatever it is. And so yeah, that was that was helpful. Um, does anyone have any questions for Maria? I don't have any questions, but that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, oh, I would love to know more about the photo of you that was on the invitation. Which photo was it? Um, it's the flamenco dance. It's from the flamenco. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I feel so sexy and beautiful in that picture. Oh. Yeah, that <laughs> photo is a, it's from my performance with Sins and Ballet. I've been performing with Sins and Ballet uh, since 2007, and they are a disability justice uh, based project uh, that uh, focuses on brown, queer, disabled performers and other disabled performers that have been further marginalized beyond disability. And um, they started back in 2007 with their main focus being on sexuality. And since then they have evolved to disability justice like full blown. In fact, Sense and Ballet are the ones who coined the term disability justice and developed the 10 principles of disability justice, which I totally encourage you to Google up and read on. Um, so yeah, that flamenco uh, piece, I, <laughs> I danced flamenco during uh, the show last year and it was one of the most beautiful most empowering experiences uh yeah beautiful beautiful i i, I just thinking about it i feel like oh, i want the flower back on my head <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that right was, <laughs> that was such a great show i uh it aired well it aired originally last year right and then you yeah another the fall. Um, another yeah. screen is there going to be a place where people could see that at some point? Uh, eventually, yeah. Eventually, it'll be uploaded to Vimeo where people will be able to rent uh, the performance. Um, right now, if you go to sinsandvalid.org, uh, I believe that in their website, there is a section where you can view other previous performances, including uh, the 2016, um, I don't remember the, the theme of it, but it had to do with, uh, with aging and disabled people. It was having to do with grip wisdom. And um, you can see two or three of my performances in that show as well. So yeah, it's uh, since Invalid is pretty badass. <laughs> yeah, I watched that show. I loved, I loved both of the flamenco songs. Oh, they you were, watched it too? How cool! Yeah, things. I watched it. Yeah, it was really. I love. Um, I have uh, my best friend lives in Andalusia, and I just love that kind of music. And uh, yeah, it was the, so gorgeous. That's what yeah, made it really, easy for me that the music was so touching and so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's the kind of work that I don't speak enough Spanish to understand the words, but I don't need to, you know? Yeah, because the music it's just touches stuff. you, you know? That's the thing about music, that it doesn't matter what language it's it's being interpreted in. It's just, it, it has music as a language of its own. It, it just touches you on like, oh, it feels you. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So any more questions? Um, I have one. Um, so are you going to be doing any writing workshops that we could participate in? Um, I have not really planned to, honestly, you know, what happens to me time after time is that I say, like I've been saying now, after July 30th, I'm really going to take it easy because I have nothing like, and, and then boom, something happens. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'll be doing, um, I, I don't have any, any planned, but I would love to facilitate. I used to, when I worked at HCIL, I used to have weekly writers workshops for people with disabilities. And I developed my own material to focus on things like advocacy and body image and relationships and, you know, just, I loved it. I love doing workshops. So if you guys ever want me to do one, I'll be more than happy to. Especially Great. If heard that I'm not booked from August on. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Kristen had a question as well. So how did you become involved in uh, performing? Ah, that's a good question because I feel so old uh, as a performer. I think that it kind of happened by accident. I really used to be just a writer. 
and uh, the kind of writer that used to carry a little binder that got thicker and thicker with my poems and I only would like share it with certain people it was super protective of my work you know when you're like young and not experienced and you think somebody's gonna steal your work <laughs> copyright you know <laughs> um and then a, a friend of mine um at work came in and said look and the newspaper here in Houston has said nuestra palabra Latino writers having their say and she said you need to go you need to go and this was like back in the early 90s you know and I, she had to push me to go and then I really shyly got on stage and read for the very first time ever. And it was such an accelerating experience because especially because it was like a group of a, a non-disabled audience and the poem that I chose to read was something that made people gasp. I don't even remember what the poem was, but it was something to do with disabilities. And ever since then I was hooked. I was totally hooked and that's kind of like when my goddess on wheels persona became my stage name because until then my goddess name had just been because I used to work at a women's uh, um, shelter um, a, a facility for domestic violence survivors and therefore I, I realized then the power of, of, of women you know we endure so much we go through so much and I would like every day at work I would say good morning goddess to every woman that walked in and so and I started thinking they would answer back, good morning, goddess. And then I said to myself, well, I'm on wheels, so I must be the goddess on wheels. And the name just kind of stuck, you know. It became mm -hmm. like my on stage name. That's great. Yeah. I I, I wanted to say um, when you brought up about the, the your cartoon about fairy tales, um, Kristen and I were just in a production, and part of it was that by a disabled company here in um, Austin and part of us our project was to write uh, fairy tales with uh, uh, where the uh, person with a disability was the hero or the hero um, that's so cool so we, yeah it was a really fun project to to find a way to include a lot of a lot of fairy tales have disabilities in them and the solution is always that they get fixed if that's you know yeah like they, they either fixed. get fixed or killed <laughs> yeah exactly you know, or, or they're, they're, the, the, they're the bad guys yeah, yeah. they're the, they're the yeah, villain they're the right guy or they get you know it's so true you know we yeah yeah so that, that's why representation is so important you know at mm -hmm. every level and in every aspect of community life every aspect of our disabled lives deserves to be represented properly by non-disabled voices not, I mean, by disabled voices, not by non-disabled voices. This is so much, the actors playing our roles, you know, so we need to continue representing, continue. That's why your creativity, every one of us here in this group, you know, plays an important role, an important part in making sure that our voices are heard, that, that, that our stories are told, that we are mm -hmm. seen. You know, otherwise we'll be left behind, we'll be forgotten, have no doubt. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's we have to 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 continue making history and make sure that our history is documented because it's very easy for the non-disabled world to just forget about us, push us in the back of the bus, even you know, or the corner of in a little space in some random book, and saying not necessarily what really happened. So it's up to us to share the history of our activism, what's really happening with our lives, how we're fighting, how we're surviving, how we're enduring how we're projecting, how we're making sure that future generations of disabled people are able to see themselves reflected in our power, not our regret, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why to me as an activist, self-love is at the, at, at the very foundation of everything. And you know what I always like to say is that when we love ourselves, we automatically fight ableism. You know, self-love automatically fights ableism simply because the world expects us to hate ourselves. The fact that we don't is rebellious. It is the most radical form of self-advocacy that you can possibly ever do. When you love yourself, you are telling the non-disabled world that all the lies that they have told us are not true. And you are making sure through your self-love that little boys and little girls with disabilities can have a mirror to see themselves in, a mirror that reflects power and beauty and love and a future of inclusion instead of segregation. You guys, we all have a great responsibility, but only so because we also have great power. Our disabilities are superpowers. You know, they're, they're not weaknesses. They're a message of empowerment and, and, and they're life-changing. 
for ourselves and for others. And I want that to be my message, that through your art, you're capable to really change the world. Maybe not the whole world and maybe not at the same time, but your art is able to transform. Never doubt that. Keep doing what you're doing. I encourage you. I encourage you to really look into each other's work. Look at the work of other disabled people. Seek your inspiration from them and make sure that you continue giving. Never stop. You deserve and we need you. We need your art. We need your voice. We need your advocacy, your activism, your presence, your humanity. Just remember the non disabled world can forget you, but the fact that we need each other. It's one of the biggest strengths that we have as a community. We recognize that we are needed. We recognize that we have power. So I love you all. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I hope that your inner activist, your inner artist is kicking ass today and always. Thank Alhamdulillah. You. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maria. That was beautiful. Thank you. I don't think any of us can top that. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to? Well, that's good. <laughs> you know, that's perfect. That's a perfect ending. Thank you. Thank you to our Art Spark Texas funders Texas Commission on the Arts, St. David's Foundation, Cultural Arts, City of Austin Economic Development, Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, Austin Public Library, Donald D. Hamill Foundation.